Good morning, good morning. Looks like Arayu won a dollar bet. I was two minutes late. All right. Good morning, everyone. Let me know if I'm coming in loud and clear and you can see me properly. It looks like everything's fine visually and audibly. If you're here live during the stream and you would like to ask me a question or add a civil interesting comment or an addition to what we're talking about, then feel free to do that via adding three smiley faces like this example beneath me before your question or comment and then I can see it during the stream. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of you talking, which is fine, which you can see here. It just looks like a whole bunch of people uh, attending the stream, which is great. I don't want to be talking to myself, otherwise I'll just make a video. And um, today's topic, topic is my my thoughts and particularly my attitude going into dealing with women as I got older. When you're young, you listen to all the BS out there, you listen to the games and the lines and what women want. And apart from everything else in life, women and how you deal with them is this kind of magic trick. And you, you got to know how to bend over backwards and warp time and up means down and left means right. And you don't somehow, everyone tells you, you don't deal with women realistically. You deal with them in this very weird way and no one's exactly able to tell you how. And um, <laughs> funnily enough and logically enough, as you get older, you realize you just should have treated them like the rest of the world and, and, and logically. And if they don't, act logically back, then it's not your problem. Most of our problems have to do with us dealing in, in the fantasy world um, because it doesn't accord with whatever you want to make sense, whatever, whatever in life you want to have make sense, it, it kind of needs to be balanced. It needs to be real. Um, it needs to cooperate fairly or logically, you know. You you um you can't expect one night on a full moon the the moon to turn into like a turkey or something. But anyway, bad example. Hello to the regulars, Luke, uh, John, Peg, Neanderthal. So. There were some really good comments. Uh, the best one, I'll read. I'll read some of them out. But the best two I wanted to highlight here at the beginning of the stream, and I thought Prince Revolt. I thought Ohio Dan's comment was probably the best one. And like a lot of these insights we have to dating in life, and what we should and shouldn't do, or how we should physically or mentally diet and be healthy, and we. We forget them. We hear them once or we realize them once and we don't retain them. And we don't remember them in that moment to think that way and put that at the front of our brain. And I remember hearing this over and over again, but you kind of know it and then it kind of slips into the background. And um, Ohio Dan says, in terms of treating, uh, dealing with women, he says, treating them the same way I do men has worked wonders in filtering out the entitled ones and the ones that have no interest in reciprocity. And I thought this probably is the best way. You know, we can talk about what worked for us, what didn't, but a catch-all way, a way that deals with reality and logic, is to just deal with women like they're people. The way you would expect a fair, reasonable person, a person you can stand being with, a person you can trust because, you know, they're not one way one day and then turn into something else another day and you're scratching your head and you have to just accept that they're women or they're a different kind of thing. And that's somehow normal. No, it's not. At least not normal insofar as you need to live with it or accept it. There, for some reason, 
the world and everyone wants us to accept that while men and women are different, that they're different in a way that they're that they're born with a um, a learning disability or they're like they they've got special needs or something. Yet they're equal to or better than us in society. None of it makes sense. It's kind of upside down. So the easiest way to say it's like, screw all that. I have nothing against you. I'm approaching you with neutrality and I'm going to treat you like another person. And you'll notice a lot of women, they kind of don't like that. They'll say it on the surface because they'll come off as bigoted and they'll come off as having a big ego, which is what most of them have out there. But a reasonable woman out there can't say anything back to you, you saying, well, I'm going to treat you equally. And you keep reminding her whenever you won't submit to her wanting preferential treatment, not kind of coming back with a political statement, I'm, I'm just treating you equally, sweetheart. Isn't that what you women want? You kind of make it political and then both of you get your guard up. You treat people equally because that's the only fair way you can get along with people. Regardless, we can all agree on the template of reasonable fair behavior. If you want to to balance that seesaw, one person on one end, one person on another, you have to work in tandem and be fair with each other. Sometimes one person's up, but you you play the game well. You hit the tennis ball back if you want the tennis game to keep going. And this way that Dan says, treat women the same way I do men. Treat them like uh, like the equal that they're always yelling at you that they are. We're equal. Treat us like equal. We want equality. We're equal to men. Men aren't better than us. Like, yeah, okay, I will treat you like that. And you will get no preferential treatment from me either, sweetheart, on a date or anywhere. And then you can get annoyed and bat your eyelids and say, oh, teehee, but except on dates and our love life that we spend 99% of 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 our days and our weeks together. There, you have to treat me like a princess. But everywhere else, magically, I'm somehow different. Well, I can only treat you and see you one way, sweetheart. Sorry. You're either a a compatible, different human being where we both treat each, each other fairly. Because while there's differences between men and women, there are so many things that people use as excuses, like um, just moral behavior. So you'll hear a lot of the macho manosphere channels, the dating channels, they'll say, well, men can cheat because we're designed to reproduce, but women can't cheat. That's not a high value woman, but we're allowed to. That's just unfair, immoral behavior. You can't expect loyalty from her if you act a certain way. You can't expect to be an alcoholic and the other person is not allowed to touch a drop of alcohol. That's nothing to do with the differences between men and women. Yes, biologically, men back in the in the wild before we had iPhones and computers and, and live streams, we were animals and we we're just kind of banging whoever and moving on and eating and shivering and, and you know, living and dying like primitive animals. But you can't on the one say, hand say, well, I'm an advanced, intelligent, high value man with uh, capacity and intellect and status and I can do all these things and we live in technology and we're furthering civilization. And you stand on this um, civilized human being podium. But at the same time, when you just want your desires, you say, well, then I can do this. No, no, you have to civilize your desires as well. You can't be civilized on one hand and then excuse yourself and say, oh, it's biology when you you want to uh, submit to your base instincts. You know, you, you've got women who they get pregnant and they say, well, I have to eat for two or three. It's like, no, you just want to eat. You just want to eat a lot. And guys like, well, we're designed to sleep around. No, you just want to sleep around. Discipline is a good thing, especially um, discipline is what you want most above what you want. So you decide that, say, for instance, a committed relationship, you want a serious relationship. And so Yeah, you want a whole bunch of other things, but if you want that the most, if, for instance, a committed relationship with a woman or a man will give you, you will trade a lot in for that. You will 
uh, there'll be a lot of tra- uh, you'll have a lot of trade off, but you're happy to pay for it. Your time, just for like the company companionship. You might want kids, marriage, the whole picket fence traditional sort of a uh, picture, and that you will your everything you do in life is leading to that, and that's your goal, and you're happy to pay for it. But um, where was I going with that? I can't even remember. I just, I just derailed myself. I do that quite often, actually. But um, yeah, let's let's tie back to <laughs> to the comment. I think treating women as just human beings, as another person, and not putting them on the podium, it's not for them. Because I'll, I'll hear a lot of guys say, well, human... If you don't treat her this way, she'll never go on a date. Or if you don't treat her that way, you'll never get into her into bed or you'll never get a second date or you'll never get a relationship. And to that, you know my answer? Good. Because you don't want that kind of girlfriend. You don't want that as your partner. Being with that kind of terrible person that's so far away from your ethical and moral standards, I hope you have them, you won't be able to tolerate being around them for even a little bit. I go to, to parties and gatherings and, you know, you go in public and, and you hear these people, even in the supermarket, you hear them talking to each other and you go, oh, God, I'm glad I don't have that person in my life. I don't, I'm glad I don't even have them as a friend or an acquaintance or a work colleague. I, I couldn't stand the, 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 the audible sort of uh, chaos. And it's... Um, yeah, it's just it's just amazing when you do treat them, take them off the podium. Then it doesn't matter if you get the girl, because that's the kind of girl that we all don't want. And I know in the moment you want to get her into bed and then you want to throw it away, but that's the danger. There is less danger in finding someone you find safer, and more comfortable to be with and you enjoy being around. I know when we were younger, we just went after hot. But as I get older, there's guys in their midlife and older, and I just don't get why they just keep dating the same way. It's like, well, I I like what I like. I can't help it. But then don't complain about it. Like, oh, women, they're all like, what? (laughs) They are not all terrible but the hottest ones tend to be yes if that's all you're going for i agree because they've got nothing else and so they amplify the only thing they have going for them and they're the ones you notice the most i get it the emptier you are the harder you work to fill the emptiness with superficiality there's almost no women out there who are 10 out of 10 gorgeous and their personality, their intellect, their compatibility with you is 10 out of 10 as well. That's the unicorn. And uh, all this kind of women are the same, I think is just a kind of bit of laziness. And fine, if you don't want to deal with women, that's another thing. But to keep trying in the same way, and you're just going for your base impulses and excusing not using your brain during dating... That to me is laziness because when you get online here and we talk and you give me your stories and we talk about reality and we go, yeah, this is right. This is wrong. This is ethical behavior. This is unethical. These are my standards. Why can't women be like this? And then you go on a date or you choose women, you click on them and you choose the opposite. You choose the comfortable, frustrating opposite of what you've chosen with your blindfold on since you were young. And I don't know if it's connected with the way your mother was or the way she wasn't and you're chasing something that you weren't given or you were traumatized with, I don't know what it is, ask your therapist or do some introspection. Not my problem. What I hope to do is give you some words of uh, things that I've reflected on. And again, I'm not perfect either. But trying to fix your dating problems, your social problems, general like what job you're in, things like that. You can make a million excuses for doing the same thing and blaming the world. But if you never even try to turn the dial a little bit here or a little bit there and see, let's see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? I've always turned left 
when I'm presented with this. Let's turn right. It's just as logical a decision. It's more uncomfortable, but there's no big deal. Next time I can always turn left again. Let's turn right for once. Try it. No, I'm a person that always turns left. This is the badge of honor I wear. Well, good for you. Then you can just kind of keep repeating the same sob story, how you're perfect and things don't work out because the world and the universe is against you. Anyhow, let me see if there's any. Smiley face comments. Has anyone asked me a question? Okay. Ooh, where are we now? There we go. Crummy VCR. He says, Once principles will be tempered by wisdom and standards that are lines that one would never cross. Yeah. When you're away from temptation and a short skirt and a pretty face, when you're using, when you're talking in the way that you're proud of, when you're away from that kind of temptation, that's what you, that's what you really should try and remember on dates, how you speak. Are you speaking in a way and are you acting in a way that you'll be proud of later? Are you, are you conducting yourself in a way that you would be proud? Like if, if there was a, a camera filming this guy, you on a date, are you acting in that way? Aim for being proud of yourself. I think that's a really good, not in a negatistical way, but aim to, to for the feeling of being proud of yourself because too many of our frustrations and our essays and thoughts about women is when we did the wrong thing, stayed too long and things like that. We didn't act in ways that we're proud of ourselves and we'd like to do it again or do it better next time. We're trying to figure it out. Some people aren't interested in figuring things out. They're interested in being victims and complaining like a lot of the woke people people that we don't respect. I think a, a, lo a lot of people out there are acting in the same way, but they think they don't, they aren't. They think, well, my complaints are le legitimate. They are, but you just get off on recycling whinging and victimhood. There's too few people, I think, that are looking for solutions that are very, very personal. You're not going to get a pat on the back by anyone. Finding your personal solutions and trying to be happier means that you're the only, you're going to be clapping on your own in an auditorium, an empty auditorium, but at least you know you're going to be doing it for yourself. But if you're waiting for everyone else to give you the permission or the right direction, stay in your little victim groups and talking about how this is wrong in the world and when the laws change and then, then I'll be the superhero, you just wait. It's The world's not going to change. You're going to be sitting there wishing and hoping and you'll get to your winter years. You'll be in your, on your deathbed and you will be ashamed and embarrassed and unable to, to, to admit it that you wasted the last 40 years of your life being right and never being happy, not even being a little bit happy. Um, yeah, it's almost April. Uh, oh, happy Easter. It's uh, Easter here in Melbourne, Australia. Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, actually. It will be Saturday night for most of you in the US. So let me tell you some of my thoughts on this. My thoughts on my, my attitude, my attitude going into interacting with women and when it started to not work in my favor, but when I started to enjoy it more and feel much more in control. And it wasn't a big deal anymore. Your attitude, socially especially, your attitude going into meeting people, going into a job, dating, your attitude going in is probably the biggest factor of it going well or not. Because you can learn all, the, all of this kind of protective, no one's going to hurt me information, and you can have these boundaries that will protect you. But if you go into dates defensively, It'll come out in your language. It'll come out in your lack of ability to speak because you're going to be censoring your words because you're going to be in protective mode. 
careful, you know, edit every word, edit every sentence in, instead of free flowing and not caring about what you say because you're not afraid. But if you're editing yourself and you're afraid and you're defensive and you don't want to be hurt and you want them to like you and all of this kind of defensive editing, defensive editing, walking on eggshells, that will pick it up. You won't be yourself because you're yourself the most when you're talking with your buddies online, with your friends, where you can just be yourself and no one really comes down on you and tries to shame you. You're allowed to be yourself. So going in with an attitude of not so much, I don't care. And for you, it might work where, uh, like for me, I went on a date wanting to have fun and they're just a person and I'm not there for a potential girlfriend. I'm there to see if I can chat with someone. It's the initial kind of, let me find out about your personality. Now, that might be too vague for some of you because some frames of reference, some mindsets work for some people, some work, don't. But another one that's similar to that, that I came across that I think is the same of, it's similar to what I did, but it's worded differently and it might work for you, is stop going on a date looking for an outcome. Stop going on a date looking for an outcome. It's the same as what I just said. I went on dates looking to just have a friendly discussion, but I, I didn't go there looking for, will she be the one? Will this turn into something? I didn't go on a date expecting anything from her. Don't expect any outcome. So you go there assessing a personality, having a conversation, having a laugh. It's completely platonic until later on it, it doesn't become that. But the initial meeting is the introduction, the polite handshake, the peeling the onion, let me find out and ask every question, every important foundational question that lets me know that, yeah, I want to get to know you more on the second date. But the first one is, I don't want anything out of this other than your personality revealed. So find a phrase or a mindset or, or, or way of thinking that helps you go on a date as yourself, helps you if you're not a social person and you'd rather be more social, go in social outings and be more friendly and, and make friends, not with the justification of, well, I'm just not a social person or I'm an introvert or I hate people. And then, of course, you're not going to get the outcome. You can be angry at the world and say, well, I'd be more social if blah, blah, blah. No, you wouldn't. Your attitude going in, you have to let go of all the resistance. So the same when you go on a date. A lot of people, girl power chicks, go on like wanting, defending themselves, scared of men, worried that any man at the drop of a hat is going to hurt her like a other ex or is ready to abuse her or something. And she's all she's always got a thick wall between her and the other person. I've been on those kind of dates. I feel it. I listen. I, I, I can hear it in their language. And it's just awkward. And I feel like either because they're not really communicating, they're putting up a polite defensive wall of I'm powerful and this is a very dry conversation and prove yourself to me or something along those lines. But all I get is like, yeah, I don't like being around them. My instinct first is I don't like this person. They're probably, I don't know, they just broke up and they're already, they're still hurt. They're not ready for dating. They need therapy first. I just feel really weird. They're not friendly. And why am I even here? It, they've got the attitude like I'm intruding on their life or something. Like they're annoyed at me on the date. Like you're wasting my time. Make me smile or prove that I'm not wasting my time here or something. You know what I mean? That kind of bitter, defensive, distant. I'm not going to tell you who I am. I'm not going to be honest, but I'm going to tell you what's wrong with the world or how men are or how my exes were bad or the attitude you go in matters so much. And I'm not saying if, if you can't help it, then just don't date. Wait a while until you're relaxed a bit more. And that's sometimes all you need is just time. But uh, some people are hurt and they want to dull the past heart uh, heartbreak with some with a replacement to make them forget. But then you just recycle the same dysfunction, and you're never clear of it to just begin a relationship. Because don't forget, first impressions really stick. If you think you can get 
into a relationship, broken, dysfunctional, angry, bitter towards men or women. And then later on, because you trust them, then you'll come out of it and they'll realize how wonderful a person you are. No, if they fell in love with the bitter son of a bitch, you change into a soft, open one that's like, well, I don't like you. You're a bit of a, I don't like this personality. I like that person. Why? Maybe they were that kind of chick as well. I've met women like that. In fact, I can think of uh, one or two where they were, we both got together because of maybe our anger or frustration at exes and, and we we're on the same page about how we were treated and what we wanted and we didn't want anything serious and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you fall for each other, the walls come down and it's like, yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. This is weird. This isn't what I locked myself into at the start. And now it's become something else and I don't really like this person anymore. So how you begin, your attitude going into dating is very important. Any, any kind of social interaction, whether it's jobs, family, friends, and, but especially relationships, because they are the most intimate and they will, whether you like it or not, find out everything about you or feel frustrated and you will break up because they sense the absence of something or something you're hiding or keeping or ashamed of. Unless you go in with an open and positive attitude, like you do with your friends, where you're not afraid, it will fail. Or you will be miserable having an hour in the shed or playing your video games away from the acting job you have to perform for 98% of the week. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys and girls don't want to do that. But uh, my audience is mainly guys, so I'll say guys for the most part. There are a lot of people that think that my my push towards just be yourself and get rid of fear and who cares what women want as long as you're being a decent person in your 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 particular kind of sandwich and who cares if most people aren't into that kind of sandwich and they'll say well then you know you're not it's not going to be easy to find a wom woman that way it's like who cares. If I'm happy on my own and I'm happy with my friends and family and I know that's where happiness is because this is who I am, I can't now be two different people. I can't perform like a seal for Chicky Poo because she looks a certain way that I've got a fantasy of, but she's probably not that way. And then I have to keep playing. Guess what wins? What wins is where you'd rather be most of the time, which is yourself. If you'd rather be your spend most of your time with your family, your friends, your hobbies and whatever, and you're always acting out of necessity for biology and the family and what women are like, man. If you, you, You're naturally not going to want to be there. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to lose your temper. You will need a lot of time away from your partner. When you have a problem, you can't talk to your partner. And I always keep coming back to just be yourself. And all of the, the, the backlash of, yeah, but human, if you do that, blah, blah, blah. And everything after you can't be yourself because of dot, 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 to me is bullshit. Unless you're a terrible person, unless you've got a temper, you're socially awkward, you don't have social skills, thing, you need to work on things objectively, fine. But if objectively, you're a decent person, you're into certain things, you may need to learn to speak better or listen better, things like that, objective things. But if it's not objective... If it's just you are who you are, you don't need to become anyone else for a different kind of person. They just need to find a different kind of person. That's all it is. And I know it's hard for guys out there, but it's even harder, if not impossible, if you don't understand this principle of being okay with who you are, especially if there's nothing objectively wrong with who you are. Who cares what someone else wants? Even if the someone else is a pretty girl in a short skirt, that's definitely your visual type. Who cares? Don't go on the date liking them already before you've gotten to know if you like them. Making up a story, gaslighting yourself to make them what you already convinced yourself she was before you even met her. Your attitude more than any other factor matters. Your mindset and your attitude going into anything, but especially going into dating, what you expect, how you expect them to act, and then when they obviously most of the time don't. It's a surprise when they do, or what usually happens is you like the real way they act that wasn't exactly what you pictured, but it's kind of like surprisingly 
good or refreshing. But most people don't follow this templated script you have in your head before you meet them. Just go and have fun. Get used to talking, having a conversation, and, and not even just necessarily talking to women. Just practice at a supermarket when you park your car and someone's next to you and say hello. Or if you notice something, make a remark. It's chit chat, but just be aware that you might be doing it for practice for yourself. You're not going to get easy and good at it if you don't practice it. I am not confident in talking because I'm silent all the time and I've got this repertoire of language and the vocabulary and, and all of this stuff waiting to spring out like a jack-in-a-box that's been locked forever. No, this stuff is like going to the gym. You need to keep talking to people, exercising your thoughts, who you are, what you really think and feel. And you practice this stuff, but also practice it with nobodies out in the street, just out of politeness, you notice something, but you're aware you're doing it to kind of exercise something that uh, needs to be strengthened in you. So... Let me go back to the comment. This was a really good one, as I said. Ohio Dan said, treat women like men, and it does wonders for you working out exactly, okay, that's what she is. I'm treating her fairly, neutrally, normally, and politely like I would anybody else, how I would treat my family members, male or female, how I would treat work colleagues that I don't find physically, you know, sexually attractive. Any stranger where I'm just being neutral, polite, when I'm just being a human being, I'm treating them like that. And on the date, I can actually now clearly see, ah, look at her. She's really entitled. She's got an attitude. She thinks she's God's gift. You can actually start seeing these things if you insist on that as a standard rather than going there as a five-year-old and you're going to date a celebrity in your head. You go on the date with that attitude. As I'll say it again, your attitude going into dating and interacting with women is probably the biggest factor as to how things will follow afterwards. If you've got a negative attitude going in, don't expect a positive outcome. It'll be very rare. If you have a positive ad attitude going in, yeah, there might be a negative outcome, but most likely you'll get a positive outcome. And the naysayers out there, the nihilists and the black pillars and all of that, they will kind of um, go to biology and nihilism and say, well, it is what it is, but at least you're protecting yourself. Yeah, but a defensive negative attitude, you will almost never get a positive outcome. It's the same as these people. Their attitude is to, I'm just going to have fun. I'm not committal. I'm going to tinder my life away and just hook up with everyone. But it would be great if lightning struck and someone pulled me out of that fun roller coaster cesspool. Why would you want to get off a fun ride, even if it's kind of up and down and you're enjoying it? No one's going to pull you off it. You will fight tooth and nail. And that's what people do. They they go on dates, just getting with each other physically. And by the way, the, the reason it damages you so much is that you're avoiding the reality of the situation. Your bodies are interacting biologically. Your bodies think we're mating, but really you're scared to death and you're going to abandon them straight away. And so you get this dysfunctional loop of fear, abandonment, fear, abandonment, fear, abandonment, and you think you're smart. But then later on, you can't actually connect with anyone, anyone later, even if you wanted to be serious and, and mate and settle with a person, because your body has gotten dysfunctionally used to um, the physical contact being associated with abandonment, fear, and danger. And just because you can consciously get your rocks off, blow your load, and, and you're safe and you escaped, and there's no responsibility and you don't have to deal with anything, you train your body like any muscle. It's the same with any kind of mental pattern you go through in life. Like you get used to something, that's just the way you feel about it. And uh, your body feels the same way. There's a lot of neuro, neuroscience associated with this where the hookup culture, you get you, your body thinks it's one thing initially. It thinks you're dating and then you rip 
that bond away before it's even got a chance to bo- to sort of mean anything or bond, at least even within the three-month period or something that would be a long-term relationship, even if you broke up six months later, when you hook up, the meaning of that is just ripped away from you um, metaphysically and you think it's fine, I had fun, but uh, it, it makes it impossible later on because your body mistrusts that because you've done done it for so long later on but anyway you you know what i'm i'm trying to say happy easter to everyone armand ghost says humans description of relationships is is extraordinarily modern western it's true i've i live in the west i live in australia it's probably worse it's the worst in america And it's probably some mixture of the two in the UK as well. They've got their own problems. Um, He continues, it is simply a business deal in much the rest rest of the world. Oh, so you're saying in most of the rest of the world, it's a business deal. It's not as romantic. I would say a lot of European countries are the last ones where there's a a nice balance. The business side that you're talking on is the, the, the common sense. I've met people from Europe and I've been to a few European countries where they have a healthier balanced view of it. Yes, they expect certain things like a a business deal, like, yeah, women expect this from men, but men men expect this from women as well. And women will play ball more and women don't hate men as much in Europe. So I think there's a a better balance of it. Now, of course, there's third world countries and extreme uh, countries where they've got more extreme fundamentalist, more religious types where... It is very much like a business deal and you can replace business with God, but it's the same sort of very black and white mechanical process of being together. It's got very little to do with your affection between each other or what what you think of them. They're they're a female body and she sees you as a male body and you perform your duty like you're a toaster and she's a washing machine. Any super chats or comments, guys? Leave them in the stream or super chat below. Melee says, I have a mantra. I am who I am and that is enough. I would I would actually change the end and say, I am who I am and that is everything. I would go, and it's not ego, uh, especially for guys. So many of us have swung so far to the nice guy, reasonable, that we're not in the middle and we, we, we think we're being fair, but we're actually more on the doormat side because society, women and everything, everyone keeps pushing us more to that side. We we think we're in the middle and being fair. So when you say I'm enough, I, I think guys need to bolster themselves much more than just I'm enough. I think you need to fortify yourself with, with I'm at least, you know, I've said I'm half of this relationship. Don't tell me what, like I have every right to speak up. It's not all your decision. It's not you're enough. You're at the very least 50% of any interaction that you choose to have, especially socially with a woman or a job or anything. It needs to be okay with you. And and you need to at least be part of the decision and the interaction and what you want. So it's not just in my mind, I would rephrase it. It's not I'm enough. It's I am everything because I will have my say as well. And if it's important enough to me, I have a right to say what I want and I have a right to interact and I have a right to be who I am, especially if I'm not, you know, especially if I just want to at least have my 50% and I have every right to be half of this relationship. It's not just that I'm okay and I'm fine being here. No, this is my world too. Everything I see and experience, I have every right to, to, to get as much fairly out of it as I can. I'm, I'm not anyone's, uh, I'm not someone's actor in their movie any more than they're my actor in my movie. But I agree with the sentiment generally. Arvero says, I like animals more than humans. No hypocrisy involved. They like, love you or not. And dogs uh, are too, uh, are very, you want to talk about a people pleaser. They usually love their owners to a fault, no matter how they're treated. Um, 
dogs are pure love, most of them, if they're treated well. They, they don't hold grudges. They're a good example of where we need to lean more into, especially modern Western women. Neanderthal. I once took three summer weeks alone in a Swedish wood just to see what happened. A lot of things happened. Most people think I was weird, but then they go on vacation and drink for three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very rare person that can self-reflect and really find what they need. So when a person just goes on a holiday on their own and stays in a cabin or a, a hotel for a week and just relaxes and goes to dinner on their own or goes to a movie and writes and he's happy with their own company, people think it's weird. And those people, like you said, then they go on vacation and they drink themselves stupid for three weeks. They go to Cancun or Ibiza, get smashed. I think a lot of those people who, they're just numbing themselves. They don't, the world is too much. Their problems are too much. Introspection is too scary. Who they are is like being thrown into space. It's it's just too big and too scary. Matt A says, it seems to me that in order to actually do what you are suggesting naturally in the moment, you have to be already confident in yourself. You can't decide to be neutral, can you? Well, yes. Yeah. Look, you have to have, this is what I say, We're, all the people that say you can't just be confident you can if you take small little leaps of faith into being courageous. And we know what courage is. We know what we should do, but we're too afraid to do it. Chicky Poo says something, and again, you keep your mouth shut instead of this time saying, well, hang on a minute. And you say it very reasonably. And the that's a little victory. When you have the courage to have little victories, you build the evidence by which you can be confident right? So it's not about just be confident, fake it. It's take little steps, courageous steps in the direction that you're too chicken shit to do or say or open your mouth with or just don't do it the same way you've been doing it. And then you gather evidence of like, yeah, I did it and I didn't think I could. And there's the proof. Last time I said it, last time I did it, last time I was proud of myself. You build the evidence to be confident. You can't just fake confidence. I agree. So this whole black and white, well, women are the way they are, you can't pretend to be confident, I completely disagree. Most guys are too lazy to try something different or have the courage uh, to take a small courageous step in a different direction or adjust their dials to speak up, to learn better, to, and all they do is to say, oh, well, I'm just this way. Well, then you'll just get the same thing occurring and you can bitch and complain all you want, but it nothing will ever change. You, you can become confident by challenging your your perceptions, counterintuitively doing the thing you're afraid of that you'd rather not do, and then when you do it and it works out and you have the evidence of saying, huh, I'm not as much of an introvert as I thought. I'm not as afraid to talk to women. I'm not this. You challenge your biases and your assumptions and then you provide evidence of who you are going forward, and then you have the confidence to keep going. So confidence comes from evidence. And if you don't want to create the evidence because you're lazy and too afraid, then you're going to just kind of make the excuse that, well, I can't make myself confident. You can't make yourself confident. You're, you can't make yourself confident because you're lazy and you're stubborn and you just don't want to do what you should do even in a small step, to provide a bit of evidence until you can steamroll that snowball down the hill. So you can become confident. I, I kind of reject that. You can't fake it. You can't just Tony Robbins yourself. You haven't done anything. You haven't proven anything to yourself. And they go, well, now I'm just confident because I say I am. And then when you get in front of, if you're not used to talking, you can't, for instance, if you don't talk to anyone, you fumble your words, you can't express yourself, you're always quiet, you can't talk, you can't do a live stream. You won't be able to. You'll feel terrible and you'll be you're jumping into the deep end. You can't do this out of nowhere. This comes from 
practicing. Good question, Luke. What did Luke ask? Uh, anyway. Any final super chats or questions with three smiley faces? Um, let's see. Okay. Now, Prince Revolver also left a comment uh, because I asked in the comments, I asked what attitude has helped you dealing with women and what hasn't? And uh, he said, what's helped is learning to be fair to myself first and or when she's willing to reciprocate. I've learned the hard way that a lot of women don't care about being fair. This is very true for most women out there. They think a lot of themselves. They're taught that they're worth it, that their princesses, Beyonce tells them so. Their mothers tell they're born perfect. And they're going to be perfect women. They're, they're just born f perfect Fabergé eggs out of the womb. And it's only if they screw it up, they're going to lessen themselves, but they'll always be a cherished woman, right? And they can reproduce and, and all of that. They're a limiting factor in reproduction. So they've got built-in value. If a man does nothing, he's worthless. He's invisible. So the reci reciprocity from a woman that's being fair and being a reasonable human being is a big thing. Prince Revolver continues, he says, I've learned the hard way that a lot of women don't care about being fair. Yes, what hasn't helped is leaving autopilot on, knowing full well the relationship would eventually crash. Yes, I think this is men's sleepless nights and frustrating working out women is what I wish I, if I could turn the clock back, what I wish I would have said, I wouldn't have gone on a date. I would have left exactly at this moment and not continue to kind of stay there, ignoring red flags and it getting worse and worse and worse. It's the same way when someone sort of says, yeah, I got a diagnosis of something and I should have started chemotherapy or whatever it might be. And I left it too long and you regret not doing what you should have done sooner, what you should have spoken sooner, what you should have, you know, those are the regrets, especially of men, what we could have done or done differently or done sooner. Uh, Terry Dean has left a super chat. Thank you very much for the super chat, Terry Dean. He says, or she says, as a thank you for trying to have solution-based conversations instead of constantly thinking all chicky poos are the same. Yes. Again, uh, I just, this ties into what I just talked about. You, you give yourself evidence that what you thought before is not true. If you think, well, I, I hate the gym or I hate doing this and you would love to be fitter or you'd love to have a better body or you'd love to read more or I'm, I, I said for a long time, I'm no good at math or I hate math. It is a big struggle for me. But the more you decide that you hate it, that you push it right to the extreme of hate and it's zero, then it's going to be that much harder to deal with it. And then there's moments where you frustrate and you can't even work out a sum and it's like, yeah, I'm crap at math. But what if you didn't have the, the self-reinforcing belief? It would be at least a bit easier, logically speaking. We all have to agree. And it's the same as this. So many guys, quite rightly, they come to the manosphere and all the red pill stuff and they point out, all their blind spots of where they've been taken advantage of, where they had their suit of armor down and they didn't have any boundaries. And they go, oh, yeah, that person was unfair. Women expect this. Women are really entitled. Oh, man, look at everything women expect and they give very little to nothing. And look at everything I give. I'm expected to and I want to give and I love them, but they don't love me. And they just kind of see the unfairness and they... You learn first by pointing out like what I don't want, what I want to, what is unfair. Human beings, you look at this up in psychology and learning, we first learn our values. Kids learn to say no first. And the way we learn as well, where we base where we learn our values and our ethics and our and our own moral philosophy is apophatically. And that all apophatically means is that you learn via no. You learn via the hot stove, like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like the taste of cantaloupe. Um, 
that was bad behavior that my ex did to me. You learn the negative and then you learn what you don't want. But we're not very good. And a lot of guys in the dating world and women, the feminists and all that, they just stay in the no. They stay in an in a um, apophatic loop. Cataphatic is the opposite, is going forward, looking for the positive. So learning from the negative is where guys get stuck in because it made... It's the first time, it's like finding religion. Ooh, the world makes sense from the negative, from what the no's are. I know what all the no's are. Therefore, it's easy to pick what isn't a no. But if you don't know what a yes is, it's not good enough to just say, well, I'm really well-versed in what's bad. And it's then all of a sudden, if you know you're, you're an expert in no and what's bad and having the magnifying glass for bad women up, then if a good woman comes up, you're still going to look at her with the magnifying glass of what you're used to looking at. It's very because you haven't exercised any positive muscles. So you are going to be very, very critical and have walls up for a girl that's completely open. And maybe like Stephanie in my life had no idea about, you know, heard of feminism, but it's not in her culture. And so you will ruin relationships how you go into them to tie back to the topic of this discussion. The attitude you go into relationships with. So this is very, very important. Being positive, being confident and finding ways to do it. Like I said, if you want to be confident, gain evidence by challenging your assumptions and your limbic system where you need to challenge them to be better, to be more courageous. Thank goodness for the mute button. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, have a think about this and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Honestly, like aside from all the excuses, if you could change certain attitudes you have going into relationship, like realistically looking, yes, the majority of Western women on autopilot, if I'm a lemming and they're all lemmings, we go on dates, we're all going to act a certain way. The stats and the divorce courts and the dating train wrecks are all going to be similar in the 90 percentile, right? But if I go in there with a certain attitude, with a certain boundaries, speaking my mind, letting them know who I am, and by letting people on dates know who you are, you are going to repel them, not in a disgusting way, but you're going to make them uncomfortable and they don't know how to speak to you because they're like all the lemmings out there. And that's good. You don't have to have a second date. You can see that the short skirts and the, the great body and the smile was just a mirage for biology for you to procreate with this person. And it didn't care if you she became a, a companion. But if you want a companion, you have to go there with the attitude of, I know what my companion looks like. I know who I am as a companion and I'm looking for a compatible one. You really need to go there with a different intent if you want a different outcome. Go in there with a defensive, no, apophatic, all women, all men, society, victim, victim, this is all bad, life is unfair, you'll, you'll just kind of be safe in the negative, pushing all the no's away. And you will be right, but you'll never get anything positive. You'll never get a yes. You're waiting for a lightning strike of a yes. A yes isn't going to knock your door down. The wall is too thick. Your no wall is too thick. You are protecting yourself too much. You, you need to, as Terry Dean was saying, we need to have more solution-based conversations. Acknowledge the no. We all start from the no. The 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 manosphere and like I'm sure feminism, like a, a person who was like taken advantage of, like you learn all the no's and learn to stand up for yourself and you have your boundaries, but then you can't stay there because you will you'll never get happy. You'll never have good times. You'll never have a good life. If you don't look for solutions and if you don't lean positively to solutions and get braver and build confidence and, and gain evidence through doing that, you will just stay that five-year-old pushing the world away, being afraid of monsters under your bed and justifying it as an adult with very eloquent academic jargon. And you will look weird to people on dates on the other side of the coffee table and they're going to think like I did to most of these girls that uh, you're still heartbroken, you're still damaged, you need therapy, or you're not for me. Whatever it is, this is weird. 
uh, I'm trusting my instincts. And the more you self-reflect and know who you are, you'll trust your in instincts in this way and you'll know what you need and what you don't. I hope that word salad made sense to you. I think I kind of painted a picture for you guys. Striking it rich, ask the question. Remember, if you want to ask a question like striking it rich, three circles or smiley faces what's up human would you advise men to get married in this day and age and do you ever foresee yourself getting married in the future i wouldn't advise men to do anything again i don't care if you're gay straight you want to be a monk i wouldn't advise you to do anything but if you again i'm not going to tell a guy if really any he needs bones from when he was young to now, and it's never changed. He can't pretend not to feel this way, but he just wants to be a father. Or you're really religious and religion has served you well and you've got a com good community and your bond with your family and your friends is like all of that. Then who am I to tell you, no, be defensive, go overseas, uh, just look in your church community, just do everything to repel and don't even go near the train wrecks, because you know what's not good for you. Lead with your brain, not with your hormones. If you, Because this question is trying to be sensible. This doesn't accidentally happen. Oops, I'm married, had kids. Oops, I'm religious. Like you, you have to kind of at least trust that you're feeling good in these beliefs if you're religious or whatever. So I'm not going to tell any guy to do anything. And it doesn't matter what I would do or you would do. Like I said, guys who are well-adjusted, I can have a conversation. They're not trying to shame me. I'm not trying to shame them. Be a monk. Guys who are ultra-religious, they want to have children. I don't. You do you. If we can talk and you're confident and good with your decision, if you can be, con if you can really be at peace and feel good and non-apologetic about whatever you decided to be, gay, straight, married, whatever, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter your type of girl like just imagine just even dating that you have to well i like this kind of looking girl but i don't want to show it to my friends because that's not approved upon because they wouldn't suggest i get with that kind of aesthetically looking woman you know it's like just go like me i've always liked women with big noses i don't know why i just found large noses in on women a turn on Maybe it's a fetish. I, I have no idea. But if I get turned on by that, why the fuck would I care what anyone else thinks? Yeah, I'm going to find a, a a chick with a face that is just like zero to me. is like unoffensive. But my, my mates and everyone else gives me a high five and a like. It's like, who cares? They're not spending the, the entire week with them all the time trying to have a relationship for her approval and theirs and everyone else, but my approval? No, mine doesn't matter. It is so stupid. So to answer your question, what I would do or what you would do does not matter. Really, guys, do whatever you want to do. And I'm not just being dismissive. I can give you advice about how I acted, how I improved myself, how my life is better, how I'm still working on things. But this is an open conversation that you can just self-reflect and be honest about who you are. You know, I'm an introvert. I'm more of a homebody. Why do I keep chasing these hot messes that always want to go out and they never want the same things I want to do and I always feel like I'm tied with them and I'm walking on eggshells and I know it's not going to work out, but I'm just like paddling harder and harder and I know I'm going to drown one day and it's going to be over. Just go for the thing or the person Live the life you want to live. Uh, it's kind of, it sounds very woo-woo and cliche, but it really is. And when I say be yourself, people say, oh, human, but if there's no but. If you've got friends and family and you know there's nothing wrong with you, you're not a rude person. There might be things you need to work on to be more social, to speak better and whatever, but they're improvements, but there's nothing fundamentally wrong with who you are and what you want to do. If you're a family man or if you, you just, you don't want to, to deal with women or or whoever. If your life is happy, then good. But if you feel alone, then you've got to work on these things. But in terms of would I advise men to, to have one life or another, I would advise men, look, I wouldn't advise men to get married. Objectively speaking today, I wouldn't advise them to get married. 
I wouldn't advise them to get have kids. But again, don't listen to me. This is me. My standards. If I say, if, if, it, how can I put it? I wouldn't. Uh, the car I have, the things I can afford. I wouldn't advise everyone because everyone's different and everyone wants different things. So I wouldn't advise men to get married. But if you want to get married and you love your partner, get married if that's what you want to do. If you want kids and you love your partner and you're religious and like, do it. But if you're waiting for me to give you the thumbs up and unless I give you the thumbs up, you won't do it, don't do it. Those are the are very personal, subjective things. So it's the same. I don't care if you guys give me approval to do whatever I want. I don't care. Love you guys, but I don't care. Or more accurately, like you guys, because I don't know you really. But like you guys, but I don't care. Um, d does that make sense? So I wouldn't generally advise guys to get married. No, I wouldn't generally... But if you are confident and you found the right person and you want to have kids, that's already a great foundation. Like you shouldn't even want to have kids with someone you don't like, don't love. Like there's, there's precursors to that. So generally, no. But subjectively, if I wanted to do something and there's too much evidence that going about it the right way, you can achieve those results, then yeah, do it. I don't care what anyone says. I wouldn't advise climbing Everest, but there are guys that they live for that. And I can just not be, I can place myself in their shoes and they live for that. That's why they feel like they're alive. It's the only thing, anything other than climbing Everest, life is just gray and they'd rather not be here. Then climb Everest, do what you want. But again, my approval shouldn't matter. So again, does that roundabout way kind of tell you, um, and I'm not trying to be evasive, but even if I say yes or no, if you really want to do it, you should listen to what you really want to do and go about it the best way so you achieve it and not just be negative all the time. Look for solutions, as was discussed before. Look for realistic solutions and your own conduct. Fix your own conduct so it's on point to give yourself the best chance of finding a person or getting the life you want or getting the goals you want to achieve, right? But if your attitude is like a train wreck, if you're some sort of idiot, negative, nihilistic, woke, bullshit, whatever you want, like you, you're not going to get the lottery win. And then it's easy to say, see, I was right. The world, all women, or it's, it's, it's unachievable. Yeah, what about those guys? Talk to them. I bet you they can tell you the steps they took as a skill to get what they wanted. But you, you're too lazy. You're too negative. Uh, you haven't self-reflected enough or anything like that. So- do what you want, and if you really want to do it, don't let me or anyone stop you. Seriously, don't let me or anyone stop you. Do it as sensibly as you can. Research, take your time, especially with women, and do it in a way that you're proud of. Don't avoid re red flags. Don't stop. Don't avoid speaking your mind if you see something pop up that you're unsure of. Clarify, clarify, take your time. And then when you want to make a decision, you want to commit to a girl, move in, get married, have kids, whatever you want to do, then you'll know it's your 100% decision. And if it doesn't work out, you did it with your eyes open. You weren't pressured. It wasn't, well, I had to marry her because you know women, if you don't, then blah, 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 and they leave. And it's like, good. It has to be your decision. So do whatever you want to decide, but do it the best way you could. Just like you guys aren't going to stop me doing whatever I want to do. Sorry, you're not. Um, Crummy VCR says, how can one turn away from evidence versus being hopefully hopeful that everything has not become a rotten vein? That line is to find for a person who isn't trained to find. I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Crummy VCR. Can you summarize that um, uh, differently? Prince Revolver, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, you're a great supporter. He says, a lot of guys often shame women for being stubborn well beyond their expiration date without acknowledging they're heading in the same direction. Yes, we, 
I think society, but in men as well, we're dealing with a certain animal that's entitled in a certain way, and you can't be a nice, reasonable guy because you get walked all over. In you know, in a confrontation between emotion and entitlement and reasonable fairness, reasonable fairness needs to kind of either submit or walk away. You can't win with emotion and entitlement and gaslighting. It's just too Machiavellian. It's too too much of a a, a gaslighting. But um, I think many guys are like, well, the only way I can be around these women is I'll play their game. And it's a very natural response. You balance the scales. Yeah, you act that way, I'll give it back to you. Just in the same way a woman slaps you, you slap her back. Again, have your own ethics. <laughs> I don't know if this, this um, video will get its hand slapped because of what I said. But again, you can balance things in, in any way you see, see fit. But you become the thing you don't respect as well. So... Um. Yeah, Melee says live life the life that makes sense for you. But also, whatever decision you make, you are going to be responsible for it, whether you like it or not. You can sit online and bitch at the world. The world is never going to fix your problems, not in the ways you want, not in your personal life. Do what you want, but you're not free of the consequences of doing what you want. You're not going to avoid that. You can blame me all you want. Like a human said this. Yeah, I did. I was talking to my like self, but then why are you listening to me? What sway do I have over your life? But you think I'm going to pay your bill? Uh, you think, like, for instance, like someone, uh, I, was, I can't remember who it was I was talking to um, the, the other week. And we're talking about the internet and suggested, like, tr try a certain inter another internet provider. And I, I researched, but if I decided to take a, another internet provider on their recommendation, and I just took it on their recommendation and it blew up in my face and I'm paying twice as much, I can't really get them, okay, well, you're going to pay for it now. No, it's my fault. Like, I should have, thanks for the advice. Now I have to make my own decision. Like, everything is your decision. Um. <laughs> I can't read some of these comments out. Anyway, any last comments? Let's wrap this up. This has been fun. But on, on the, finally, I will say stop trying to get an outcome with women. If you want to hold any frame of reference, don't go on dates looking for an outcome. Go on dates assessing personality and uh, having an introduction and a fun conversation. That's all it is. Don't look for the outcome. You'll feel a lot better. You'll have a better time. Any last super chat or comment, remember, smiley face before your comment, not after. I like this example. And I will try to answer it. Let's wrap this stream up. We're on a 20 to 30 second delay. So I'll wait a, about a minute before we wrap up. But, yes. I have to say something. Karu, you were right. When I built my PC, I should have gotten higher speed hard drives. Waiting for these things to boot up and they lag is like a water Chinese water torture sometimes. Next PC, I will get fast high-speed hard drives. You are correct. All right. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter to those of you today in Australia, in the, in the time zone. And uh, ha happy Easter to the rest of you tomorrow in the US or in Europe if you're there now. Have a good weekend. And let me see. Were there any other interesting comments here? Let me see. Yeah, let me let me read some of them out. Do I have my browser open? Ah, no, I don't. Um, which one is it? I think it's this one. Yes. It is. All right. Okay. My question, what attitude with women going into dates or relationships, what has helped you and what hasn't? Luke said, knowing that statistics aren't everything and they demonstrate 
examples of what may, might be occurring, not necessarily what is. Statistics in and of themselves can be very difficult to prove and also disprove. And also, I will add, very difficult to have a conversation in real time with because you're kind of just repeating dry data unless you can infuse it into an interesting conversation. So uh, data and stats and maths do not make good for a very good conversation unless you've got a, a very dry kind of nerd in front of you. Well, if you are a nerd as well, maybe it'll be a compatible match, but I don't know. Uh, even with the repeated studies, the very bias of collecting information is just that. However, people have their own agendas and viewpoints on almost everything that can often change on a whim. People often overlook our capacity to lie the desire to be seen a certain way from either peers or strangers due to this it's important not to paint every new person romantic interest you meet with the same brush your past experiences are yours not theirs delay both gratification and premature judgment until you know for sure if they are someone you see a future with yes or as i said before stop trying to get an outcome go on a date neutrally wanting to have a conversation with somebody um Neanderthal says what worked when I finally grasped that a genuine burning desire for both participants, both physically and mentally, is what drives a loving relationship. Uh, yeah, but you can't get there until you kind of assess the personality, I would argue first, because then you're just being led by hormones and what you want to happen, and you see things that might not be there just visually. You, you haven't gone under the skin to actually see if what you sense is actually real, if it's communicated, if it's if it's confirmed by a communication, like you don't know it for sure, you believe it to be true, but you don't know it because you haven't talked with them enough. They haven't told you who they are. Uh, I keep uh, really pushing guys to guys and girls to talk more and have conversations by which to just put on the same page what you think and see and align it with who they actually are. Because if they, if you both describe with words and generate the 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 right um matching thoughts that you're both what you think you see and hear that's when it works but some often you get into relationships we with a fantasy you've generated in your own head because you want it to be that way uh, i found myself communicating with them in an almost a new an honest and neutral way regardless of how attractive they may have appeared yes the the remaining 0.1 percent is of course when they are romantic green lights in both directions and things seem uh, seem to effortless for, effortlessly fall into place in my experience. Yep. Quadzilla says, I find avoiding altogether has worked well. I have more time, money, and sanity. Fair enough. Uh, with some people, avoidance is enough. And especially when you've just kind of had enough, like you don't have any more energy to do this. I understand completely. Like I said, you want to be monk or anything else. Um, Alec Hermit says, uh, during emotional during emotional and confrontational times with her, your absence is more productive than trying to rationally prove solutions, especially if they involve her modifying herself. If you can't talk, if they're emotional and they need space, fine. But very quickly, the distance between the confrontation, them having a little bit time to, th to think, you should resolve and talk quickly. If you don't, that I would argue that's not a healthy person to be with. If you can't quickly after the emotional moment, learn to kind of talk, get on the same page and ap apologize and work things out. If you just need to kind of, if it takes days or you just don't talk about it and you just get on with your life, so I would argue that's not a good relationship because you are not working anything out and you are just avoiding issues. And those will just keep popping up again and again. And you've just learned that avoidance is the way to solve your problems, which it isn't. This is a, a really good one by Prince Revolver. He said, um, what's really, uh, what's helped? Learning to be fair to myself. Oh, actually, I read this out, didn't I? Yes. I read your comment out. As, same as how I hired I Ohio Dan. Your name is really, it doesn't seem hard to pronounce Ohio Dan, but it actually is. Try saying Ho Ohio Dan five times really fast.
T Dog says, ironically, by realizing I had to genuinely not be needy or desperate. Yeah. Be honest about how needy and desperate you are as well. You can talk to yourself that you're not, that you're an alpha, that you're, you know, stoic. But if you really are, uh, you need to kind of really wear that muscle down and train yourself to not be that way. Uh, and an easy way, not an easy way, but a good way is to speak your, because if you're needy and desperate, you will be super nice and you won't speak your mind and you will say everything along the lines of what she's saying, even if you do have a different opinion. The way to 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 push that needy, desperate part of you back, I would say, is learn to be confident in starting to speak honestly, because then you'll you're not going to have every opinion she has, and you'll then you'll learn to be okay with not being needy. Like you can say something that is the opposite of her opinion, and you're okay if she goes away. So you will push back the needy, desperate feeling. <clears throat> Your need to be right and have self-respect will start to override your need for her or your need for female validation. He continues, uh, mainly being okay with focusing on being myself. The opposite never worked. Yeah, it doesn't. Seeking approval to impress, providing, uh, providing pedestalizing, pedestalizing, putting myself second, etc. I agree. All right. Any last... Um, <laughs> using hybristophilia against them. Good luck with that dysfunctional relationship. You might have fun in the bedroom, but 99% of the rest of the week, you're not going to have fun, especially long-term. You are going to have a very awkward relationship, unless you're like that too. But Unless you're a violent guy, then maybe. But they're usually those uh, relationships that are on again, off again, up and down. He loves me. Walk around with a black eye, but he loves me. You don't know what he's like. Dismissal. Jason says, you don't argue with them. Deal with women as if they're the oldest child in the room. A variation of deal with them like they're uh, human beings, although this is kind of dealing with a lot of women the way they actually act. Most women out there do act very childish with their entitlement, and uh, they just want, 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 and they don't want to give anything. So they do act like tall children most of the time. Uh, positive and assertive to attract women. Yeah, who cares? Um, you need to be positive or assertive. In I would see that in terms of for yourself so you don't have any fear, so you can enjoy the date, you know, so you can have fun just saying what you want, joking your way. You know, all of this stuff, like positive and assertive, and that attracts women. Like, no. That makes you have more fun. Who cares if they're having fun? Who cares if Cheeky Poo wants to go? Like, it means more if you're exactly the way you are, and then she wants to get go to bed with you, and then, then it's actually real. But if she wants to go with go to bed with your act, then guess what? You have to keep that mask on all the time, and then when it finally falls apart, you can pretend to blame women, but you, you should be blaming yourself for wearing the mask in the first place. Um, dealing with them in confrontation that comes to my mind first I'd say stoic and rational yes treat women like men or treat women just like human beings they want to be equal treat them like equal and that's probably the best way to treat them just to, to find out who they are and whether you're comfortable with them so anyway no more comments I'm saying uh Thanks for um, coming on, for all the comments. Like, subscribe, guys. Join the channel down below. Give me your comments. What's uh, What have you noticed with your attitude? Have any of you changed your attitude? You know, I've always been this way. What's the harm? Let me just go there with like a more lighthearted attitude. Let me go there not caring. Let me go there without putting it on a pedestal. Let me go there without expecting anything. Let me just go, f I'm tired, like no expectations. Like, have you gone there challenging your autopilot and going there with less fear and a bit more courage and just letting go and you just realize, huh, this is easier than I thought. Why didn't I do this sooner? This worked better than I was convinced it wasn't. You know, I thought I was this guy, but 
And I always thought, no, I'm this guy, black and white. But then I just said, ah, let me try being, not being someone else. Let me, let me not hold on so tightly with being that other guy. Just go there, relax a little bit. And it works out really well. Tell me your experience down below. Like, subscribe. If you've got a microphone, jump on Gilded after this stream. A couple people usually are on. And enjoy your Easter weekend, everyone. Crummy VCR says, you can't have a conversation when they are glued to the to a phone. Well, good. Again, what more evidence do you need? Again, I, I don't get it. Like, you start to realize, yeah, but she does this. Good. Don't date with her. Yeah, but then they do that. Then, yeah, then don't break up with her. Like, we all know what's bad. You, all you're telling me is, yeah, but bad behavior. Yeah. So what's the answer? <laughs> well, then you don't go out with her. Yeah, exactly. It's not hard. The hard thing is, is to resist the TNA. But if uh, you try, always try to lead with your brain, be curious and don't expect anything and speak your mind and don't put on a mask, uh, things are a lot easier for you. Who cares about them? For you, things are a lot easier and a lot clearer. All right. Have a good Easter weekend, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the stream and uh, how long have we been going for? I just want to check. I'm curious. An hour and 20. I could have sworn it was just over an hour. Anyway, have a good weekend. Bye. Check you, check you later. Catch you later. Check you later. That was English. I can speak. All right. Bye.